Hello, and welcome to another edition of Your County at Work, the show that brings you to the front lines of hardworking men and women of Newcastle County government. I am your host, Wayna Dobson. Today, I'm happy to tell you that representatives from the Delaware Division for the Visually Impaired Business Entrepreneurs Program, Max Snacks, and JJ Corporate Cafe are in the NCC TV studio today to talk about the new cafe that will be opening up in our government center. Thank you so much for being here, gentlemen. How are you today? Good. Good. So if you would be so kind and introduce yourselves and then we'll go into our segment. I'm Tony Mashinsky with Max Snacks and a blind operator with the Business Enterprise Program. Okay. And I'm Rob Schmunkofer. I'm the Blind Entrepreneur Program Director for the State of Delaware. No, I'm Lewis with James with J&J Corporate Cafe. I'll be the operator of the cafe. All right. Thank you so much for joining me today. Well, let me first start off by tell you all that the employees here are like eagerly and excited about the cafe coming open. So let's talk about um, when it's going to open up. Okay, uh, our soft opening will be September 14th, that's a Monday, and then our grand, our hours of operation will be 7.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Then our grand opening with our special guest, County Executive Tom Gordon, will be the noon hour on Monday, September 21st. Okay. Alrighty. Now, you mentioned the county executive, and I have to say this before we dig deep into our interview. Um, the county exec is someone who cares about all people, regardless. So let's talk, I mean, I, when I introduced, I talked about the representatives from the um, visual impaired. So let's talk about that a little bit. The cafe will have visually impaired people working in it? Well, no, they wouldn't have the um, visually impaired people working in it. I do have outside um, employees, but um, anything that comes into the cafe is uh, donated to the visually impaired. We work together on that, which um, Rob probably can speak a little bit more about how that part works. Okay. Um, but no, not at, not at this time. We don't have any visually impaired people working in the cafe. Okay, all righty. <laughs> My, my job is the director for the state. What I do is I go around, I uh, open businesses, and we uh, have the operators, which is the blind entrepreneur, eventually own and operate those businesses. And what they do is all the uh, behind the uh, scenes work, like the paperwork and the uh, filing of the paperwork. And what they do is they can go ahead and build their business from there on. If they want to go ahead and add, most of them start off with vending machines or something like that. Tony here has gone on to go ahead and open up a cafeteria, which in uh, most of our buildings we have are state and federal. This is actually the first major thing that we're doing in a county building in the state of Delaware. Uh, many other states, they got city and they have uh, county buildings. So we're actually starting now to kind of go on the same route where other states have been for several years now. Okay. All right. So overall, this is going to be a win-win situation yes. for everyone that's involved, <laughs> yes. correct? Okay. Who would like to talk about that a little? It sure is. I would. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. If, you. if you look at it, it's a win, not only a win-win, it's a win-win-win-win-win. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and briefly, I'll, I'll tell you what that means. All right. For the division for the visually impaired, and the Blind Entrepreneurs Program, their express goal is to provide all the assets and tools necessary for a blind or visually impaired person to actually be productive and own their own business. And in this case, that's my baby. Okay. So it's a win there for them. Mm -hmm. It's a win for me, obviously, and a win for the disabled community overall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, people with disabilities, either born with or occurring later, one of the first things we start hearing is, you can't do that. You can't do that. And if you're not careful, you start saying it yourself. Right. 
I can't do that, I can't do that. So it's an encouragement to other people in the disabled community to rise up above their disabilities, go out and seek the necessary tools through agencies, through organizations. Don't let your pride get in the way. Mm -hmm. A scripture comes to mind that fits not only spiritually but in daily life. You ask not, I mean you have not because you ask not. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's a win there. Another win, employment. Okay, in every case employment is good. As Ulysses said, he's hired a staff. I'm employed through the, the cafe itself also. So it's good for the economy, good for the people. That's win, win, win. Another win for Newcastle County government. Now we all know that uh, government entities have to comply with the Americans with Disabilities Act. And we hear that often, that they say they are in compliance. But in this case, mm -hmm. thanks to Executive Gordon, it's happening. Yes. It's gone from the, the word to the action. And I want to express my gratitude to him and all of his staff who have just helped, helped us so much through mm -hmm. this process of getting this thing open. Another win? In this vicinity, in close proximity to the cafe, it's estimated there are 1,500 people who work and carry on business around here. Now at present time, for lunch say, they either have to pack their lunch, skip their lunch, or scramble to a nearby convenience store where they have to place their order, get in the car, maybe eat it in the car or on their way back mm -hmm. or at their desks. Not good for your health. But we are going to provide a comfortable seat, a nice table, a great menu at very good prices. Mm -hmm. So win, 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 win <laughs> for all involved. <laughs> I love it. And, and speaking of um, the food, um, Myself and um, a few other of our team members here, we went down to your cafe that's at the State, State Building. Building yes. The presentation was phenomenal. Oh, um, the portions were great. Yeah. And as he mentioned, the prices was even better. Yeah. So we, <laughs> we're really great. excited about you all coming um, yeah. here on then. So let's talk about what's going to be on the menu. Oh. <laughs> well, I have a basic menu, um, the cheese steaks, burgers, and french fries, things of that nature, but we're also going to bring in a lot of specials, um, a lot of healthy foods. Um, I'm going to start doing more of the uh, shakes, um, the vegetarian stuff. So right now I have, uh, I have a great team over there at the State Building, mm -hmm. and um, they, they constantly think of different things we can do, not just to have the burgers and the cheesesteaks and the french fries, but on a more healthy note, um, vegetarian dishes, uh, bringing in the smoothies and stuff like that in the morning time. So, and a lot of people, they don't like to eat heavy all the time, mm -hmm. so we have salads and things like that that we do. So my staff at the State Building is great. They, they're 100% behind everything that we're doing. If I'm out of line, they put me back, so that's great. Okay. But as far as the menu's concerned, um, it's going to be a basic menu that you will have uh, folded in your mm -hmm. hand, which will have the cheese steaks, burgers, and um, bacon, cheese, fries, and all of that. But we'll have like different um, uh, specials that we'll run every day. Um, I just connected with uh, uh, another group that does the um, Jamaican food and the Caribbean food, so okay. we'll have like curry gold knox tails for you here. We'll have the greens and the mac and cheese. Okay. Um, so it's, it's different varieties that we'll have. I have one of my special things that I would love to make in the morning, which is the banana pancakes. <laughs> so <laughs> well, I know I'm making everybody hungry. Okay. Right? <laughs> but we're, we're going to have a very special menu. Um, I take pride in what I do. Um, I love to cook. And what I don't know, I can call my brother, which is a chef in California, and he can take care of things for me. So. Um, I take real, real pride in cooking. My whole family are just cooks. We, we got a big cooking background. So, and the prices, like you said, they're 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 very um, reasonable. You come in, you won't get one of them 
flat hamburgers. I have okay. nice juicy four or five ounce hamburgers that you can get, which cost you under five bucks. Okay. Um, I have meals that we put together that cost you five, six, and seven dollars. So everything there will be definitely convenient for you, and it's great for you. All right, Rob. Let's talk about the training and placement of the blind. Okay, the training for first of all coming into the program, you go through our VR reps, and they go ahead and they'll, the counselors will go ahead and talk to you and find out where you actually can get placed into the program. There's many other programs that fall under DVI. We got DIB. We got uh, several others that you know a person could be qualified for. Um, but BEP, which is um, our program, what we do is we go ahead and uh, they have an online course that they'll take for, through Hadley College for the Blind or ha Hadley School for the Blind. They also have, uh, to, to be able to lift, at least a minimum of 40 pounds. They have um, to pass uh, food, sir or food safe cl classes. There's a lot of things to get into the uh, course before they even actually get to the pr place where they're actually licensed. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes one year to work in a place to actually get your full business license to go ahead and be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. uh, we are working, trying to find, working a lot, trying to go ahead and build places like this or work with places like this um, so we can actually bring more people into the program. Uh, with the state, where we're at right now, we're pretty much close to what national rates are. There's about 85% of the blind here or visually impaired in this state are unemployed. So my job is to go ahead and try to create those jobs for them and new businesses. And one of the bi biggest challenges that we have is we are kind of limited with a state that's only a little bit over 900,000 people to kind of build these uh, places and especially working with uh, local governments because some places will uh, accept you and some places won't. Um, so that's where we kind of stand. When um, our operators become full-time operators, then what they'll do is they'll go ahead and they'll operate a place and if Tony would move on to what, say another position or another place, he would go ahead and go into a higher position and then someone would bid on his place to go ahead and take his place over so we always try to make sure that we actually always have new people trying to come in. And we're looking for a lot younger people now because our average age of our operators is about 52 years old. Okay. So we're starting to get where we have people who are getting close to retirement and everything else. And we need people that are gonna be uh, taking the program from where we're at now to a brand new horizon. We need mm -hmm. to go up and beyond where we're at we want to become competitive with other states. Uh, in this state, we only have six operators. Other states have up to ma as many as 100 or several hundred operators. And that's why we look for opportunities like what we have here with you guys to go ahead and have you know, a better paying positions. Mm -hmm. um, overall, uh, our state falls in about the median, close to about the median for the other states with pay. We're about close to about $30,000 a year per operator, but that really is kind of um, skewed because you got some people who are making much more and you got some people who are making far less. Mm -hmm. uh, you got some of the operators are way below the poverty level. Mm -hmm. And this is the reason why we look for these opportunities to go ahead and be able to build them up and give them the opportunity to go ahead and be uh, as successful as anybody with vision. Okay, maybe, Wait, I'm uh, sorry, go ahead. May I add? Um, something. <laughs> I've been blind for 42 years and I just want to acknowledge the Division for the Visually Impaired throughout all of those years. Rob and the Director of DVI, Dan Madrid, they do an excellent job of taking a person, I was well, I won't tell you how old I was when I lost my sight, okay. but I was an adult, <laughs> and I didn't know what I was going to do. <clears throat> but through the agency, they provided me with tools and encouragement and training, and now I can, I can say with this new opportunity, I'm successful, mm -hmm. thanks to them. 
Oh, thank you for sharing your testimony with us. And what I was about to say is um, prayerfully that the viewing audience who is watching our show right now, that they know someone or um, they themselves are visually impaired. And I want you to give your number because hopefully we can get you more people um, to participate in the program. So what's a good number um, to give you a call on? Okay, let's see. 302-255-9833. Okay. That's my uh, office phone number. And normally what I want to, want to do is go ahead and also say, if you look um, online, we do have a Facebook. So if you look on Facebook and look up for divisionally, uh, the Delaware Visually Impaired, you will find our uh, uh, phone numbers on there and everything else. And you will be able to go ahead and be able to get uh, into a person who would be the counselor or a VR counselor, which is really important to go ahead and go further on into any of the programs that we have. Okay, and um, Tony, um, made mention of this about the um, number of people that are in the vicinity that could come here. I want to make sure that people understand that this is not just for Newcastle County employees, that this is open to the public, correct? That's okay. right. Executive Gordon has waived uh, that and inviting everyone in the area to come over. So yes, it's open to Anyone who's hungry. Okay. <laughs> All right. Did you want to add anything before yeah, we I, end? Actually, I did. Um, just listening to, to Tony and Rob um, and how they were discussing the opportunity, I came to Rob, well, actually not to Rob, but to the Divisionally Impaired mm -hmm. about, about a year ago, I think it was. And um, I spoke to them about going to the Herman Holloway uh, cafeteria that they have mm -hmm. there. And um, I didn't get a call back or anything. I think they were kind of switching over between right. Rob and someone else that was going, uh, that they were having difficulties or whatever. But when Rob stepped in, I gave them another call to find out what was going on. And me and Rob are, you know, connected right away. And um, he came and he says, oh, I have something for you. And it, it, when he, what he had for me wasn't what was in God's plan at the time. Mm -hmm. And when Rob said, well, let's think of something else, I'll keep in contact with you. It's probably about six months later, he called me and that's when he told me about the state building. And I just knew right away that something good was gonna happen. The state building opened on Jan uh, June 11th, mm -hmm. is when we opened, June 11th. I got another phone call from him six weeks later okay. about mm -hmm. the county building. I, I just knew that, that this was in his plan and I said, for things to line up the way that they're lining up, it's good not only just for myself, but for them, but for other people that's out there that's mm -hmm. looking for a job. Mm -hmm. They're taking care of the, the visually impaired people that needs you know, the assistance and the jobs and everything, and then I'm giving the people that don't have any outlet or anywhere to look to find jobs. I've hired almost 10 people so far, and within a six week, Mm -hmm. You know, so not just what they're doing, but it's also following over to the mm -hmm. community and helping out the community and what's going on. So when I when I talk about these guys, they're 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 really highly recommended for people to support um, because not only are they doing things in just their own organization, but they're actually helping people outside of the organization as well. So it's a blessing. Okay, so as Tony said, it's a win, 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 win. I think it was about seven win. Oh, it's, it's, it's five wins. Win, 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 win situation. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Definitely. All the way around the board. And I mean, it's, it's a great experience for myself. I mean, I had a business before he called me, mm -hmm. but this was just something exciting and it's, it's moving rather fast. And I'm just thankful that I can keep up. <laughs> All right. So let's recap on the soft opening and the grand opening, September please. September the 14th will be the soft opening. Monday. And then uh, September the 21st will be the grand opening. Okay. One of those days. Yes, I will be giving stuff out. So okay. Stay tuned so what, what the um, soft opening is going to be at what time? Uh, 7.30. 7.30 open, in 730 the morning. We'll be open okay. regular time. 7.30 to 2.30. We'll run 
Uh, just a soft menu. Okay. What what I already have. It won't be any other big specials with the with the grand finale. Okay. <laughs> but you will be able to come in and get your coffee and, and get your salads and your burgers and chicken fingers and stuff like that. And then once the grand opening hit, that's when I'll go into more of the specials that we'll be running. I actually have uh, my chef over there now. She's looking at different things and seeing what she needs to work, you know, to make You said she work. is over there? She is. Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> chef Tania, All right. There. Yes, she's yeah. great. Um, she has a lot of knowledge and background of food. Um, she's actually finishing up her bachelor's in food right now, so she has a ton of knowledge. Um, and what 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 needs to get done inside of there? So it's a that was a great addition, and, and she was sent from heaven. Oh my goodness! Yesterday, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she right. came in on yesterday. So wow. and that was just my prayer to, to send me people that's going to make this run right. All right. Well, thank you so much, gentlemen, for um, coming out today. We yeah, appreciate you so very us, much, sir. and um, I want to um, thank the county executive yeah. for taking time out of his busy, busy schedule to have the initial meeting with um, your group. And now it's coming to fruition that we will have a cafe in our um, Newcastle County Government Center. All right, thank you so very much. Thank You're you. welcome. Okay, that brings us to another conclusion of another episode of Your County at Work. I hope that you learned something today. Please keep in tune to NCC TV to learn more about your local government, Newcastle County. For County Executive Tom Gordon, Executive Producer Jim McDonald, Director Tony Prado, and NCC crew members, Josue Ortega, Steve Berg, and Rob Paolo, thank you so much for watching. This is Wayna Dobson signing off until next time.